Hi, this is Ethan Hine. Welcome to Play With Your Music. In this video, we're going to be creating a musical structure graph of Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel. And the value of doing this exercise is that it helps you understand a song below the surface level. It helps you pick apart its components, both sonically and musically. And uh, even if you're doing this with a song that you've heard a thousand times, uh, you generally will find that you can understand it on a very different level after completing this exercise. So if you look in the links at the bottom of this video in the description, uh, there's a link to a completed structure graph. There are also links to a chord chart of Sledgehammer and a musical space graph, and we'll be talking about that one in another video. Uh, you might also want, as this video goes along, to open up the song in another browser tab from YouTube. Um, so go ahead and do that, and then we'll continue. So here is a blank uh, structure graph template. And on the top row, we've got uh, boxes for um, the names of the different sections. It's going to start with an intro. It's going to end with an ending. Um, and other labels might be things like, you know, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, breakdown, etc. Next, we've got a row for section start times, which is just the time at which each section starts. Pretty straightforward. A row for the number of measures long that each section is. And then a row for each of the sound sources. And those might include things like guitar, bass, drums, vocals, etc. Finally, we've got boxes for the meter and the tempo. So the meter is the number of measures, I mean, the number of beats in each measure. And we're going to determine what that is right now by listening to a short piece of the song. So see if you can count along. So Sledgehammer, like 99% of pop songs, is in what we call 4-4 time. And all that means is that each measure has four beats in it. So as you're counting along, you're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, da 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 da, one, two, three, da da da, two, three, four, etc. Uh, the tempo is the number of beats per minute. Um, Sledgehammer is about 97. It speeds up and slows down a little bit, but averages 97. Um, there are a couple of different tools you can use to detect the tempo of the song. Um, we've got a link in the description to a tool from the Echo Nest that automatically detects song tempos. Um, I used a piece of dance music production software called Ableton Live, which also automatically detects tempos. And 97 is kind of a medium up-tempo. Usually ballads are in like the 60 to 80 range, and very up-tempo dance and rock songs are in the 130 to 140 range. So Sledgehammer is somewhere in the middle. So the next thing to do is to identify the different sections. And this is going to be a little bit subjective. Um, different people might come up with different conclusions as to what moment in the song constitutes a section. Uh, there are a couple of different clues you can look for. Uh, you can look for changes in instrumentation, you know, groups of instruments entering and exiting. You can look for changes in uh, harmony. You can look for chord changes, big melody changes, or all of those things. So here are four transition points in the song. So you've got horns, 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 horns. And then everything thins out and the vocals enter. So that is clearly a section change. Okay, did you hear that big break in the drums? Even though things sound pretty much the same before and after the break, usually that kind of big punctuation is just an indication that, okay, we've come to an end of a section, now something else is happening. So this is the beginning of the chorus, and there are a couple of different indications. First of all, uh, the chords change, the melody changes, the words change, uh, the horns enter, um, all the different musical variables shift. And here's the end of the chorus. And so here again, you have a couple of different clues that something big has happened. Uh, the harmony changes again from major to minor. The horns re-enter. Uh, the lead vocal drops out, and this kind of 
processed, vocoded, backing vocal enters. So th those are all good clues. So we've gone through and marked the times at which we believe section transitions have taken place. Uh, and these are all um, following the YouTube version of the song. So if you're following along with the iTunes version of the song, you, you just subtract 14 seconds from each of these times. And the next thing we've done is gone through and named each of these sections. And this, again, is going to be pretty subjective. We decided that this whole long thing that happens before the first chorus is just one long verse with a bunch of subsections. So verse 1a, verse 1b, verse 1c. Um, and then there's this mildly controversial little section, verse 2b. It's a second verse, but it has the same structure as the b part of the first verse. Uh, you might choose to label these sections quite differently. You might say that these are all different verses, or you might say that, well, eh, verse 1c is really a pre-chorus. Um, there is no really hard, fast, definitive right and wrong way to do this. So the next thing to do is to count through each section and see how many measures long it is. Just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And you're going to notice that all of the sections are four or eight measures long until you get to the end, where it's 24 measures, and then there's this fade out. Um, in general, pop song sections are going to be 4, 8, 12, 16, 24, or 32 bars long. If you're finding that your section lengths are like five bars, 10 and a half bars, either you've chosen a very eccentric song or you might want to rethink where your, uh, where your section markers are. OK, so the next thing that we've done is to go through and list all the sound sources. And let me get out of the way so you can see what they are. Um, we've identified um, this synth bamboo flute, drums and tambourine, bass, electric guitar, uh, horns, a uh, couple of different synthesizers, lead and backing vocals. Um, and then it's a matter of going through the song and identifying in which section do these different sounds appear, right? So there's this very short little intro with just the bamboo flute and then pretty much all the instruments enter and you know the rhythm section, the bass and drums and guitars just carry all the way across the song. But you can learn a couple of interesting things just from looking at the structure graph, for example, you know you can see in this breakdown. Even if we if, even if we didn't label it a breakdown, just by looking at how many sounds exit during this little section, you can tell. Okay, this is a breakpoint in the song. Um, furthermore, you can tell that the back half of the song is a little bit denser and more intense. There are these horns under the background that weren't there in the first half of the song. Uh, there is this Fairlight piano, this digital piano. There are backing vocals at the end that aren't there at the beginning. So you should be able to get a sense of the, the contour of the song just by kind of glancing at your completed structure graph. So that's it. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the different sound sources and the musicians who played them.